Hello, I know it's been quite a while since I've done one of these, but here I am again. Anyhow, um, this is a kind of slight announcement, sort of, but um, I'll do it anyways. This is not going to be fundamentally anything different than what I did in the past. I'm just going to be taking a record and then talking about it. But I did want to bring up that this is not going to be just purely album suggestions. In my much more longer reviews that I did up on a set band and all of their records in question, that's going to be a lot rarer than they were in the past. It's not going to be a weekly thing because honestly I've decided that maybe the better idea is to focus only on really the bands that I absolutely love when I do those and then do this for bands that maybe I don't love as much or... I shouldn't say I don't love as much, but only have maybe a few records that I actually care for. So anyway, I'm not really changing these videos in any way, shape, or form, though I will say this because I don't happen to have all of these records on CD. Some of these videos is just going to be my little character sitting somewhere up on the side of the screen, the Adate character, and then the album cover like right up in the middle or something, and I'll just talk about it. So, not all of them are going to be like this, where you can see my face. Only the ones where I actually have the record on hand, because if I don't, I'm just not going to do it. Or if I have it up in a different format that isn't a CD. But, anyhow, let's get uh, away from the boring bullcrap and get to the record I wanted to talk about today. And that is, of course, Thundersteel, my good sirs. Hmm. Now, I have to say this right from the very get-go about Riot is it's very important to note that though Riot was, if I recall right, back from like 1980 or so, a relatively early band, if I recall right, though I may be wrong about what year they formed, but pretty early in the, in the 80s, maybe even the 70s, like late 70s, if it was 70s, like 78 or 79, but still. This was a band that by the time that this particular record, Fun to Steal, came out, they were actually going through a lineup change. This was a drastic lineup change for them. And though fundamentally the guitar work, which was probably the vocal point for this band at that said point, was still there. The vocals changed. I believe the bass player changed. One of the rhythm guitar uh, guitarists changed. And I believe even the drummer, though I may be wrong about that one right off the top of my head. But it was a major lineup change. So honestly, when most bands change like that, it doesn't go well. In the case of Omen... Yeah, when they changed vocalists from J.B. Kimball out to whatever the face of the other guy was, yeah, unfortunately they weren't that good afterwards. So most of the time when they do a large lineup change, it's not good for the band. It tends to just destroy them. Now, Omen admittedly so was only one member, but still. This is the bloody exception to that rule. This record, I believe I've talked about briefly on this channel in the past, is a perfect re record from top to bottom. By God, do I love this record. I mean, you start off with Fun to Steal right from the very get-go, and it just goes from amazing to just epic. An absolutely phenomenal record in every way, shape, or form you can imagine of a said heavy metal record. If I do have any particular flaws with this record, um, I, I couldn't tell you because I really can't find any off the top of my head. As far as I'm concerned, this is about damn near perfect as far as a record comes. And for me, that's that's a rarity nowadays because there's always like one or two songs on a record that just doesn't really appeal to me almost always. This particular record should also be noted that they had changed stylistically to more of a speed metal, kind of a power metal band, but let's be honest, it's speed metal. For those who claim it's power metal, yeah, you can yap on it, it really is, and it's much more speed metal. Just because your lyrics happen to be somewhat reminiscent of that doesn't mean that it actually is that. Just because you talk about Vikings in your music all the time doesn't make it Viking metal. It's black metal, thank you very much, or folk metal, depending upon how you do it. But anyway, that's a story for another day. Again, this is a record that I believe um, it was like 89 or something like that. It was relatively late in the 80s, if not 1990, that this record came out. So honestly, I didn't even suspect them to do a brilliant record that late in their bloody career. But like I said, they formed early, early 80s and possibly even late 90s. Unfortunately, I didn't care to do the research before this. Excuse me on that. I normally don't do that, but I'm doing this video at right before I'm about to go to bed, so I do apologize there. But, um, again, this is a record that honestly, like I said, most of the time when a band, 
that formed that early did a record up in like the 90s or early 90s or late late 80s that's when they started to go downhill and started to do less quality work this was very much the exception here and i've stated this about um i don't know very very few bands that that where that was actually the exception the later they went the better they got <clears throat> Another kind of very notable aspect of this record, and um, some might call it goofy, but I actually really enjoy the album cover. It's a simple but it simple but very effective album cover that really just portrays the said theme of fun to steal pretty damn well. I guess going back to sort of thinking about it, if there's any flaws on this record. I don't think the lifting quite sounds as heavy as it probably could. That's probably my only real drawback about the record. Now, personally, I've said on many case, case, um, occasions, excuse me, I don't really care if a record's heavy or not, but at the same time, it probably could use a little dosage of a little bit more gain or something along those lines just to add a little bit more punch to it, but yeah, that's personally me. As a record is, it's a brilliant damn record. One of the better speed metal records I've ever listened to, and one of the few exceptions, as I already said, of the said role of <clears throat> a massive lineup change and, you know, that completely destroying a band. Well, like I said, this is the pure exception to that. As far as I'm concerned, we're right up there with two of my favorite of records of all time, no time, but particularly one of my favorites being that of, and I'm going to do a review on it, don't worry, I have my bath review coming sometime in the near future, though I might actually review all of my, um, not review, what's the word, re-record all of my said little, no, nippets or whatever you want to say, stippets, I can't actually th think of the word, snippets, that's it, snippets. Um, for my Baffery review, because I probably could do it better, but I'll see. I might, I might keep it. But anyway, my favorite record being, of course, Hammerheart by Baffery. That's my favorite record of all time. Maybe not quite there on that level, but damn do I love this record. And honestly, I highly suggest that you happen to pick it up wherever the hell you can get it. You can find it on, like, Amazon, or hell, even Bonds & Noble, for that matter, which... It's amazing they're actually still around, but let's not go into that. But yeah, you can find it up online for relatively cheap. I got it, I think, for like 10 bucks off Barnes & Noble. So, yes, in my opinion, go out there, get it. Damn good record. Anyhow, this is Art Alive here. You know damn well what to do. <laughs>